take you um, 30 years back in time to uh, Karlskrona Archipelago and U-137. All Swedes remember U-137 from that time. It was a Russian submarine stuck on a rock right outside a major naval base of Sweden. And this uh, submarine was of the Whiskey class, which was soon known as Whiskey on the Rocks. <laughs> a year later, uh, we had the biggest submarine hunt of all times in Hoshfjärd in 1982. The hunt went on for a month and involved several Swedish uh, naval ships and submarines and helicopters, and they all tried to find these intruding submarines, and they never found anything. There was no submarine caught. Afterwards, there were some uh, um, uh, signs that were reported. People had seen bubbles at the surface, they had seen periscopes, they had seen larval feet moving on the, on the seafloor. So there were uh, signs that there had been some intruders, but we never found out what it was. Some of those signs or indications were also acoustic signals. So there were uh, different kinds of acoustic signals recorded on Swedish military hydrophones, and those were used as evidence for that there had been uh, intrusions. And these submarine hunts, they went on all through the 1980s. Uh, for those of you who lived in Sweden at that time, know that uh, this was a never-ending story in Sundsvall, Tör, and many other places, including right almost downtown Stockholm. We had these submarine chases involving a lot of uh, military actions, and then nothing really came out of it. But the military intelligence in Sweden started to gather all this information into uh, a cathodic or library, and uh, they had this uh, scale to show, uh, uh, if, if, to, you know, to rank the, the different uh, uh, um, uh, indications. So uh, a rank number one was a, a certain underwater enterprise from a foreign country, and number two was a likely one, and number three was a possible one, and so on. And uh, the two uh, sound recordings I want to talk about today is called the typical sound and the cavitation effect, and they were both ranked as number ones. Number one, so if you heard this sound, it was a certain sign that a hostile country was uh, 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 active in the inner Swedish uh, waters. And actually, uh, these activities continued. Even after the Cold War, when everyone foresaw that uh, these uh, um, um, uh, military activities would, um, would cease, the military in Sweden, they still reported to the government every year almost an unceased uh, level of, uh, of activities. And this caused uh, Carl Bildt, our prime minister at this time in 1994, to write a letter to Boris Yeltsin uh, protesting against these activities and, and, and telling the Russians that they should stop immediately uh, with, with, these, uh, with these actions. All these... Uh, evidence after the Cold War were all based on these uh, sound recordings. So people started to think also in the government, like, could it really be that uh, Sweden was still under constant attack many, many times every year from uh, hostile submarine activities? Could that really be? Well, uh, uh, actually, a military investigation in the early 1990s showed that the cavitation effect, one of those sounds, was actually caused by swimming mink. And uh, uh, it's actually quite a feat to find this out, because this sound sounds pr exactly like a, a cavitating propeller, and it's actually like a four-stroke propeller. When a mink swims through the water, there will be cavitation, like small air bubbles generated around its nails, and, uh, and when it then swims from one island to the other in the Swedish archipelago, it will just sound like a, a boat swimming or a boat traveling. So it made sense in a way, and uh, it was quite, uh, quite astonishing that they could figure this out through a lot of experiments, that it was actually not uh, uh, intruders, but it was just mink in the Swedish archipelago. So uh, we were uh, uh, involved then in a government investigation starting in 1996, me and Håkan Westerberg, also from Sweden, and uh, this was a broad investigation to try to figure out if this other sound source, the typical sound, could be caused by other uh, causes than uh, hostile activities. So we were brought into this uh, 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 very secret uh, room uh, under the uh, naval base of Berga in Stockholm, and uh, uh, this was the, we were sitting there with all these officers, and they were actually playing these sounds for us the first time. It was the first time any civilian in this country heard the typical sound. These sounds were very, very secret at this time. And I have had, uh, at this time, I had, of course, seen Das Boot and other submarine movies, so I, I imagine something like a pinging sound or a you know, like a sound of a rotating propeller or something like that. But it was nothing all like that. It, it was not at all like that. It really sounded like someone frying bacon. 
It really sounded like a popping and hissing sound coming and going, really like small air bubbles released under water. Not at all what I would have expected from a submarine. So me and Håkan, we went home and we started to think, could there be other causes for this sound than, uh, than the claimed submarines? Well, uh, there must be a lot of uh, sound sources uh, distributed in uh, underwater generating small bubbles. What could that be? People had investigated if there could be bubbles from sediments and so on, but it didn't really fit. So we thought, could there be animals creating these sounds? And there is actually one animal, and I brought it with me here. It actually turns out that uh, the staple food of Sweden, the herring, is generating small bubbles. If you have been out in the archipelago in the summer, sometimes you will see bubbles at the surface, and after that you will have herring jumping like crazy over the water. These are herring chased up by mackerel or other fish below the surface, and they will generate these uh, enormous amounts of bubbles. And it turns out, actually, that the herring has a swim bladder, like many other fish, and this swim bladder is connected to the anal duct of the fish. And this is a very unique connection. It's only found in the herrings. So a herring can squeeze its swim bladder, and in that way it can blurt out a small number of uh, bubbles through the, uh, through the anal opening. And then you multiply this. You have to imagine that uh, herring live in big schools, and I talk about really big schools. They can be uh, several square kilometers wide and many, like 10 or 20 meters deep. So uh, they can be huge, these schools. And uh, if you then scare this school, perhaps by having your own submarine moving through them, you can definitely think about generating large number of uh, independent gas sources underwater. So we try this. We just bought a fish in the supermarket. This is actually the uh, secret uh, film we made for the Swedish military. It's actually the only uh, uh, first time we show this in, in Gothenburg, I think. Uh, and this is actually one of the first times you can actually hear this sound also in, in Gothenburg. Uh, uh, but you can do it yourself. You just buy a few fish and you blow them below the water and you put your ear below water and you squeeze the fish and you get this beautiful <laughs> concert. <laughs> this sound we sent to the military and it turned out that this sound was exactly the same as the typical sound. There was a little slight uh, change in the frequency content, but that can be explained by the fact that uh, we did our uh, trials in a small aquarium, and the, the actual fish is, of course, swimming in the deep blue ocean. So, uh, uh, and it's the only sound that has ever been uh, uh, explaining the typical sound. So it's a perfect uh, match to the typical sound. Actually, it's a very interesting sound. It's like a fingerprint. There is only uh, herring producing these kind of very specific sounds. So uh, uh, the military was finally convinced that this was the cause of the typical sound. And the typical sound was removed from the number one categorization uh, down into the scale, which meant that uh, all these uh, indications from typical sounds were no longer used as uh, definite sounds of hostile submarine activities. So what does this mean? Well, it actually means that uh, from, uh, if you look on the, this is the official statistics of Sweden concerning intrusions into our uh, waters, uh, I mean, definite intrusions, completely sure intrusions, the number ones. And you can see that it all started in 19, it actually started a little bit before the, the, the whiskey on the rocks. Uh, we had a few uh, intrusions before that, and then through the 80s we had a lot, but they still continued through the 1990s, but then almost all of them were the yellow ones, which are all based on the typical sound. And after we squeezed the herring in 1996, there has actually been no, uh, no uh, uh, hostile activities at all in Swedish waters ever since of any kind. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, what that's, so what that tells you is that really by a, sm a slight squeeze on a herring, you can really change a country's uh, foreign policy in terms of... Uh, <laughs> how you interact with your neighbors. <laughs> and uh, the, <laughs> the other thing I think uh, this uh, tells you is that uh, uh, you should always be really careful when you uh, listen to your politicians, because they are so deadly sure that uh, we have to bomb the other nation or we have to do this and this, but sometimes it's based on at least uh, very dubious uh, evidence. Thank you very much.
Thank you.